I'm actually a biomedical scientist by training and uh, I, I was in the US for a long time and uh, I uh, came back to Sri Lanka mainly as a trial. I was recruited there and they asked me to basically come back to Gene Tech Research Institute. Some of you may have heard about it. I got a little bit about the company just to give you a perspective. And uh, basically the Gene Tech Research Institute is a non-profit which has been set up inside Gene Tech to be able to receive grants. And we basically started from scratch. They said it's got a three-year contract, see what you can do. And we've been able to develop it to a point we are actually getting fairly good sums of money from the United States government actually to do research in multiple research projects in dengue tuberculosis and mediatosis. And a couple of our speakers have touched on this. This, this is actually more than work as a scientist where I'm in the lab doing work. It's more of a project management role and having to deal with the different cultures and all of that. If you don't have that skill, it's going to be very difficult to survive in the future. Just a few more words about Gene Tech. You've probably heard about it. We do a lot of forensics, but that's not the only arm of Gene Tech. We're probably one of the few biotechnology companies which actually breaks in. Okay? And uh, we have found a good business model, which was developed by Dr. Maya Gunsekar. She was in the university. She built up the molecular biology program at Columbia University. She was frustrated and she left and she started Gene Tech. I think things are better now. I lecture at Columbia University, so I know the environment is changing. But I think we need to do a lot more. And I think the private universities that a lot of you represent will play a role in pushing the government universities to change in the way. Because the way I see it, you will be competing for their best students in the very near future, and probably you already are, with scholarships. And that is how a dynamic education system, higher education system, should really work. You see this happening in the United States. They have a lot of experience. We have the state university. Of course, the difference is they charge, but it's a nominal amount, and they both go and go. Okay, moving on to my topic. So GeneTech basically has three, four arms. I run the nonprofit, the nonprofit research arm, and there are molecular diagnostics, forensics, and the school of gene technology, which has courses. So biotechnology and biomedical sciences, I sort of put it under one big umbrella. It's one of the most popular areas of study. It's just because of our tradition of either do biology or you do math. And then a lot of the people who do biology hope to become doctors. Those who can't just say, oh, well, I've studied biology this far. I'll become a biologist. And unfortunately, still, quite a few people, we produce about 10,000 biology graduates just from the government universities alone. And unfortunately, a lot of them are unable to find employment just because of the lack of opportunities. There are very few viable biotech uh, companies in Sri Lanka, hardly any. Of course, it's good for us. We get the pick to pick the cream of the crop. Okay, you won't believe how, I mean, I find we never have to put an ad. I have never put an ad for the last seven years I've worked in Sri Lanka. So I'm always able to find very good people. But then, for every person I find, I turn away about 10. And it's quite agonizing for someone like me to see them. Okay, so what are the skills we need? So, as I mentioned, it's a challenging job market. And mind you, it's the same in the US and in a lot of the world. Despite a lot of the you know, files and all that that people talk about. Biotechnology is a brutally competitive industry. Because either you get the hit, especially when you're talking about high-tech research. Either you get the hit and you work, or you've lost it. So there's a lot of venture capital funding which comes in. And you get a hit where you get a drug, but you get a lot of money, or you lose. So getting back to it a little more, what are the areas? The, biology-related graduates will have employment opportunities in the future. So I'll just touch on some of these aspects which the others also have touched on. A solid basic understanding is going to be very important. Nothing is going to be, because when I interview someone, the first thing I'll ask is I'll just throw in a question or two to see do they actually understand their basics. That's going to be very critical. 
I know a lot of institutes have biomedical sciences or biology or biotechnology because it's an appealing subject. A lot of students come in. But then it is your responsibility to make sure that they can actually go out and get a job. Otherwise, unlike in the government universities, you're going to have a problem because they will come back and ask you. That is just how market forces work. So one of the areas is you've got to teach the basics. That's got to happen. And another thing is, one of our panelists talked about it, cross, you know, we have to cross interdisciplinary, multiple areas. Nowadays, you can't just be a molecular biologist. Even for my PhD, which was done quite some time back, I started as a, I am actually an immunologist by training, and I did a lot of molecular biology, but I ended up getting my thesis with work on lipids. That's how flexible you have to be nowadays if you hope to actually get out and make it. So it's extremely important you get that first layer. Then you go on, and I think a lot of these uh, topics are offered. One of the things a lot of people tend to neglect is the subject of ecology. And it's old stuff, right? You don't, but that is becoming increasingly important, as you'll see in my next slide, especially when you come to areas like, such as systems biology. Uh, as I show here. So basically systems biology talks about how different areas work together and to address some of the global problems this is going to be a very key area that biology graduates can actually step up and do. And of course finally I put down the famous omics area you've probably heard of it, all genomics, the proteomics, the metalogom metalogomics and um, lipidomics etc. So there are three key areas, I'll, uh, you know, I don't want to take too long as well, uh, that I will touch on, that I view as key problems that biology graduates can actually step up and be able to uh, get jobs in, in the future. One is solving water-related problems, how to adapt crops to a changing global environment, and bioinformatics. I'll talk in detail about each of them. So, this is uh, an article that I found actually some time back when I was asked to give a uh, talk at the agriculture institute, at the agriculture department at their uh, research sessions. You won't believe how many countries are under water stress, including the United States, China, and even India. One country, probably some of you may know this already, Saudi Arabia, has started growing wheat 20 years ago, saying, because if you remember history, in 1970, the OPEC decided, okay, we are going to limit the supply of oil, and then one of their worries is, what if the rest of the world limits the amount of food that will come in? So, they built a wall and they said, okay, they found a huge aquifer, and they decided, we are going to tap this aquifer and grow wheat. Guess what's happened? happening? They did not think of sustainability. And what is happening now is slowly the aquifer is being depleted. And this year, they've actually decided that they will not be growing any more wheat. Because it's more important to have drinkable water than to grow the wheat. 